Hey everyone, welcome. The year is 2042. Rain is an orphan living in the Jackson Star Space Colony, 65 light years away from Earth. Her parents passed away from pneumonia after years of forced labor in the stellar mines. Her brother, Andy, tries to keep her spirits up with jokes, but Rain only dreams of escaping. Life in the colony is harsh, there's no natural sunlight, and the residents are relentlessly exploited by the Wanutani Corporation. Rain's greatest wish is to live on the planet Yaga, and Andy even fantasizes about having a horse once they get there. Now that they've met the minimum service requirements, the siblings are ready to pack up and leave. However, when Rain goes to submit her travel authorization, the clerk refuses her request. Due to a current labor shortage, the minimum service quotas have been doubled, meaning Rain will be sent to the mines for at least another six years. She begins to protest, but then notices her brother is under attack. At that moment, we learn the truth. Andy is actually an android, programmed by Rain's father to protect her like a brother. Unfortunately, Andy's programming is malfunctioning, and now Rain has to take care of him. After fixing him and rebooting his system, Rain tries to process the injustice she's just endured. Then she gets a call from Tyler, her ex-boyfriend, telling her he has some interesting news. He asks her to come to his trailer and to bring Andy along. When she arrives, she finds a group of other young people there. Navarro is the group's pilot, while Kay is Tyler's sister, and Jorn is their cousin. Jorn isn't fond of androids, and makes this clear through his attitude toward Andy the moment he arrives. Tyler's news is about a signal he stumbled upon a few days ago. He found out that the Renaissance space station, abandoned for years, is now drifting nearby. His bold plan is to steal the cryogenic capsules stored there to escape the colony. It takes nine years to reach Ayaga, and the only other way to get the cryogen necessary for safe travel would be through a travel authorization. Rain is struck by Tyler's daring idea. The Renaissance station belongs to the massive Wan Utani Corporation, and getting caught would mean they'd never leave the colony. It becomes clear why Rain was invited. Her artificial brother, Andy, was also manufactured by the same corporation and uses the same technology as the station. The group needs Andy to bypass the station's security systems, which are controlled by the computer system known as Mother. Rain doesn't want Andy to take that risk, especially since he hasn't been functioning properly. Jorn tries to convince her in the worst way possible, calling her brother a tin can. Tyler apologizes for his cousin's behavior, but agrees that Jorn has a point. Both Tyler and Rain are orphans because of Wan Utani, and she knows they will never stop exploiting the families living in the colony. This might be their last chance. Tyler reassures her that she won't even have to leave the cabin. Though still scared, Rain decides to take the risk and joins the group. The young crew boards the ship, the Kerbalin, with no plans of returning. However, problems begin to arise as they near the Renaissance. According to their calculations, the station is set to collide with something destructive in about 36 hours. Tyler reassures everyone that there's nothing to worry about, promising they'll be in and out before that happens. The three girls stay aboard the Kerbalin, while Andy and the boys head out to retrieve the capsules. When Andy presses the button, the door unlocks without any trouble. The three enter the station and quickly realize that the gravity generator is malfunctioning. This causes a series of jolts, leading to several accidents as gravity fluctuates unpredictably. Andy activates Mother's system and manages to stabilize the situation. Tyler informs the group that he's found the cryogenic capsules but upon inspection, the display shows that there's only enough cryogen to freeze someone for three years. Since the journey to Iaga takes three times as long, the group starts to lose hope. However, Tyler remains optimistic, as his sensors detect a cryogen depot somewhere on the station, meaning it's still possible to refill the capsules. Durr comments on the station's excessive military equipment and suspects it may be under some kind of quarantine. However, Tyler insists there's nothing to fear, assuring them that anything capable of infecting the crew would have died long ago. Throughout the mission, Jorn continues being rude to Andy, despite the android's efforts to stay out of his way. Rain asks the other girls why Jorn acts like this, and Navarro explains that there was a gas leak in the Jackson Star Mines. Three people were trapped inside when the security android ordered the area to be sealed, 
and one of them was Joran's mother. Meanwhile, Kay starts feeling unwell, and Rain discovers that she's pregnant. Kay asks her not to tell Tyler, and avoids answering when Rain asks who the father is. Inside the ship, Andy starts cracking jokes to ease the tension among the crew, but it only makes things worse. Joran finally loses his temper, and reveals that Andy's days are numbered, because the planet Yaga doesn't allow synthetic people. Hearing this, Rain feels guilty for not telling the truth earlier. But Andy doesn't seem upset. His main objective is always to ensure Rain's well-being. As the trio nears the ship's core, they notice that some equipment that should be powered down is still running. This worries Navarro, but the boys insist there's no one aboard. However, they can't explain the damaged sections of the ship, which suggests something terrible occurred there. They even come across what appears to be half a person, but Bjorn concludes it's just an android. All of this is momentarily forgotten when they reach the cryogen chamber and find more than enough supplies to power all the capsules. Unfortunately, Bjorn injures his fingers while trying to open a compartment, triggering an emergency alarm. The chamber doors seal shut, and even Andy can't override them. Sheer force proves useless, so Rain and Navarro are forced to board the station to help, passing by another android on the way. Rain comes up with an idea. Andy might not be able to reverse the lockdown because he lacks special access, but she realizes she can transfer the credentials from the old android to him. She's shocked when the robot suddenly grabs her arm, but it only activates briefly, reacting to her interference device. Rain successfully retrieves the chip containing the access data and passes it to Tyler through the gap in the door. Tyler inserts the chip into Andy, who begins to reboot. Rain warns the others that it could take a few minutes. Unbeknownst to the group, sticky creatures start to crawl out of the cocoons that were previously frozen. At first, Navarro thinks his friends are playing a prank when they mention movement in the water. However, the situation turns serious when Bjorn is suddenly knocked down and an alien grabs his face. In a panic, he manages to break free and hurls the creature away. Now everyone is on edge, but Andy has still not completed his reboot. Another alien lunges at Tyler, and this time Bjorn steps in to save him while Rain frantically works to get the door open. Andy finally snaps out of his trance and successfully unlocks the door, allowing the three to escape. They try to reseal the chamber, but the aliens easily break through the door. Navarro becomes the next victim of the facehugger, and this time, no one can pry the creature off her. However, Andy surprises everyone when he begins speaking with a newfound confidence. No longer timid or unsure, he now displays intelligence that surpasses that of his human companions. After analyzing the creature, Andy concludes that Navarro isn't in immediate danger. The alien appears to be keeping her alive, though its motives remain unclear. Jorn wants to electrocute the alien right away, but Andy warns that doing so would be fatal for Navarro since the creature's tail is wrapped tightly around her neck. When Rain begins asking questions about this specific alien species, Andy admits that he lacks the answers. While his mental capabilities have been enhanced, the relevant information is still stored in the other android. It's time to interrogate the host who identifies himself as Rook. Rook wakes up disoriented, speaking about his past mission before realizing the current situation. To everyone's horror, Rook explains that there's no way to save Navarro. The alien has implanted its seed inside her, and it will begin growing soon. She will not survive the process. The only mercy they can offer her is to end her suffering in the least painful way possible. Rook also urges the group to leave the ship immediately warning that their lives are in grave danger. It's only when he points upward that the group notices another presence in the room. A massive creature is suspended from the ceiling. Rook identifies it as the xenomorph that had sabotaged the Nostromo mission 20 years ago. The only survivor had managed to trap the monster in the airlock. Since then, Wayland yutani has been scouring space for the specimen, and when they finally found it, scientists believed it to be dead. However, Rook explains that the xenomorph is a perfect organism, capable of surviving under the harshest conditions. Ignoring the android's unsettling admiration for the enemy species, Rain suggests they try freezing the alien's tail to release it from Navarro's neck. The plan works, and the alien retreats, allowing Navarro to regain consciousness. 
But before the group can celebrate, Rook has more bad news. He warns that there's a 60% chance Navarro is already infected. He urges his fellow synthetic, Andy, to make the hard choices when humans are emotionally incapable. Andy agrees with Rook and tells Jorn that he will not allow Navarro to return with them. Predictably, Jorn reacts violently for a moment. Andy shifts back to his previous, gentler personality. He apologizes to Rain for what he's about to do and heads off after the others. Jorn manages to return to the Carolyn with Navarro, and she begins initiating the departure procedure. Tyler is stunned to realize that they're leaving. Kay asks Jorn what happened, and as he starts to explain that Andy has become a threat, he's abruptly cut off. Navarro begins to feel unwell, and with a quick scan using an X-ray tool, they see an alien moving between her ribs. Kay tries to help, but Navarro suddenly collapses, her chest bursting open as a xenomorph baby begins to emerge. With no pilot, the Carolyn spirals out of control and crashes into the Renaissance. Rain and Tyler quickly decide to attempt a rescue. Andy warns them that the explosion has altered the station's trajectory, shortening the time they had previously calculated. To reach Kay and Jorn, they must cross the Romulus module, which is crawling with aliens. While they deliberate on the next step, they don't notice Andy slipping away. Rook is secretly communicating with him, summoning him to the control room and asking him about his primary directive. Andy appears to have forgotten his original programming and no longer mentions Rain. Taking advantage of the moment, Rook declares a new directive. From now on, Andy must fulfill his initial purpose. When Andy reunites with Rain and Tyler, he claims he was just exploring alternative solutions. He explains that the xenomorphs are blind and can only locate prey through body heat. Upon hearing this, Rain comes up with an idea. They can raise the ambient temperature to match their own, confusing the creature's ability to detect them. Andy agrees that the plan might work, so they put it into action. However, he warns them that there's still danger, as the aliens will sense even the slightest temperature change. They must stay calm, and running is out of the question. Rain and Tyler then begin to move cautiously, tiptoeing across the area. To make things worse, the remains of crew members who didn't survive the xenomorph attacks lie nearby, adding to the horror. Meanwhile, Kay faces her own trouble. Kay regains consciousness after the ship crash, but she is now alone, surrounded by slime on the ship's walls. Soon, Bjorn reappears, injured but determined to electrocute the unwanted passengers. Unfortunately, his courage is short-lived, as the alien, thought to be defeated, sprays a powerful acid at him, dissolving both his body and bravery permanently. Desperate, Kay tries to communicate and Tyler responds. As the alien slowly unfurls its body, she follows her brother's instructions. Finally, the door opens, but Kay, panicked, rushes toward the abyss and takes a nasty fall. Hearing his sister's screams, Tyler can no longer keep calm. His presence is quickly detected by the enemies, and Andy advises them to escape immediately. Being faster than the humans, Andy reaches the next door well ahead of them and activates the closure. Tyler and Rain barely make it through, but Andy justifies his action, calling it a calculated risk. Rain, however, starts to distrust her synthetic brother, sensing something off about his behavior. With only 30 minutes left before the space station's destruction, Kay begins to recover, but must move cautiously, as the xenomorph remains dangerously close. Carefully, she approaches Tyler and Rain, but a locked door separates them. Realizing several aliens are closing in on Kay, Andy refuses to open the door, explaining it's an ambush, and the creatures are waiting to attack. Breaking her promise, Rain reveals that Kay is pregnant, hoping to sway Andy, but even this doesn't soften his artificial heart. With slim chances of saving everyone, he claims he must choose the option that results in the fewest casualties, unknowingly echoing the same decision that traumatized Bjorn. Tyler watches in horror as his sister is dragged away by the aliens, while Andy remains cold and indifferent. Fearing the worst, Rain confronts Andy and demands to know his main directive. To her horror, Andy reveals that his mission is to protect the company's interests. Cornered between two threats, Andy and the aliens, the young couple has no choice but to follow his lead as he guides them to the heart of the Romulus module where Rook addresses them through the terminal screens. Rook explains that the colonies are facing escalating crises, which have worsened with each passing decade. 
The only way to save the people and the company's profits is to enhance their biological makeup. After the tragic Nostromo incident, Rook's team conducted a series of experiments before they too were wiped out by the very subject of their research. They managed to synthesize a microorganism capable of transforming the human body into something nearly as perfect as the xenomorphs. Now, all they need is to deliver the vials to the people at Jackson Star, and for that, Andy needs Tyler and Rain's help. Despite their differences, the trio agrees that the proliferation of aliens aboard the Renaissance is a common enemy. The android even offers them weapons, warning them to use them only as a last resort, as a space shootout could result in an acid bath. The trio leaves the control room and enters a corridor lined with sticky cocoons. Choosing another path seems like the obvious decision, but before they can retreat, Tyler hears a familiar sound. His sister, is it K, is still alive. He quickly rushes to free her from a cocoon, and Andy follows closely behind with what appears to be good news. Kay has not been infected. The alien couldn't host its offspring because of the baby she was already carrying. Andy even offers her one of the restorative compound injections, but Rain, skeptical of Wayland yutani scientists, refuses. She suggests instead that they put Kay into a cryogenic capsule to keep her safe until they return to the colony. However, their plan is abruptly interrupted when a xenomorph attacks, capturing Tyler and killing him in the process. Andy is also severely damaged in the confrontation. Desperate, Rain manages to get Kay to the elevator, but she decides not to go with her. Instead, Rain gives her instructions on how to reach the Carolyn ship and activate its autopilot to return to their original destination, planet Yaga. Kay agrees, though uncertainty looms. Kay begins to experience intense pain as soon as her friend leaves, and with few alternatives left, she decides to inject herself with one of the restorative compounds. Meanwhile, Rain heads back to the depths of the space station to save her brother. The modified android resists her attempt to remove the component that changed him, knowing it would allow the old Andy to take control again. However, Rain refuses to assist the new Andy, and ultimately convinces him that reverting to his original state is the only option, even for the company's benefit. Just then, the speakers announce that only 10 minutes remain until the station's collision. Andy wakes up, apologizing to Rain, but there's no time for tears. They must escape quickly, avoiding both the looming disaster and the aliens. Back at the ship, Kay stumbles to safety where Rook appears on the control panel, introducing himself as a friend and offering to pilot the vessel. Meanwhile, Andy proves that he's truly back, cracking one of his typical lame jokes. This time, however, it's a joke about gravity that sparks an idea. Rain remembers the faulty gravity generator that caused so much chaos when they first arrived and decides to use it to their advantage. Caught off guard, the xenomorphs lose their grip on the surroundings and begin to float aimlessly making them easier targets and making it safer for Rain to fire. Rain unloads all her ammunition on the floating creatures, and though their acidic blood sprays into the air, it doesn't immediately harm the station's structure. With the elevator inoperable due to zero gravity, Rain and Andy are forced to float up the shaft toward the exit. As they near the top, an alien grabs Rain's leg, but she manages to break free although she hasn't quite reached the top yet. Just before gravity returns, Rain is ironically saved by her enemy when an alien tentacle wraps around her waist, preventing her from falling. The alien acid that had spread is suddenly dumped onto the floor as gravity reasserts itself. Since they are on the lowest level of the Renaissance, decompression begins quickly. Rain clings tightly to the emergency ladder as the elevator sweeps the aliens toward the destructive vacuum. The last alien, right beside her, is about to attack when Andy grabs a weapon and saves his sister, definitively proving his return to his original directive. The two rush to the exit and join Kay, but their relief turns to terror when they see Rook's face on the screen. The flight has been set for remote piloting. Still on the space station, Rook knows his time is running out, but he counts on Andy to deliver the injections to the company's representatives at Jackson Star. When Rain switches the controls back to autopilot, Rook realizes this isn't the same Andy he trained. His final moments are filled with despair as the massive space station collides with the planet's ring of rocks. A moment later, 
Rain decides to reprogram Andy. Instead of always prioritizing what is best for her, he must now think about what is good for both of them. With everything seemingly under control, Rain prepares for the long nine-year sleep on Iaga. However, an alarm suddenly goes off, signaling that something is wrong with Kay. When Rain opens the capsule, her friend is screaming. Her pregnancy has advanced at an alarming rate. Rain watches in shock as the birth unfolds, especially since it's not a baby. Rain grabs the newborn and runs, but the acid quickly eats through her arms, forcing her to drop it. As she frantically searches for something to defend herself with, the creature on the ground begins to open up. Rain is horrified to see a human baby amidst the slime. She tries to save it, but the acid burns through the floor wherever it touches. The damage is already enough to interrupt the autopilot. Desperate, Rain finds what looks like an empty cocoon and strange footprints on the floor, as if something had walked out. In the capsule area, Andy is trying to help Kay when the newborn appears. It is not a xenomorph, but it is far from human. The creature quickly attacks Andy before turning its attention to Kay, who it perceives as its mother. When Rain returns minutes later, she finds Andy badly damaged and the alien feeding on Kay's body. She attempts to freeze the creature, but this time, the trick doesn't work. Rain flees the area, realizing her last resort is to don a spacesuit and stay tethered to the ship while she figures out how to defeat her enemy. Suddenly, she is surprised by the alien, which approaches to end her life. Just before it can strike, Rain kicks a cocoon filled with acid, creating a huge hole that opens into space. Rain is immediately sucked out, with the creature clinging tightly to her, cracking her helmet visor. In a final burst of anger, she ejects the alien into space along with part of the ship, narrowly escaping catastrophe. Quickly returning to the Carolyn, Rain initiates the route to their destination, then freezes both her android brother Andy and herself, ready to begin a new life on Iaga.